Physicists claim quantum theory proves life after death. A very special thank you and a shout out to my good friend, Mark Combs. Uh, he's author of End the Beginning, and he shared this article on my Facebook uh, wall, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, the headline is, Physicists claim that consciousness lives in quantum state after death. Uh, it says, does quantum mechanics predict the existence of a spiritual soul? Testimonials from prominent physics researchers from institu institutions such as Cambridge University, Princeton University, and the Max Planck Institute for Physics in Munich claim that quantum mechanics predicts some version of life after death. They assert that a person may possess a body-soul duality that is an extension of the wave-particle duality of subatomic particles. Wave-particle duality, a fundamental concept of quantum mechanics, proposes that elementary particles such as photons and electrons possess the properties of both particles and waves. These uh, physicists claim that they can possibly extend this theory to the soul-body dichotomy, if there is a quantum code for all things, living and dead, then there is an existence after death, speaking in purely physical terms. Dr. Hans-Peter Dorr, uh, former head of the Max Planck Institute for Physics in Munich, posits that just as a particle writes all of its information on its wave function, the brain is the tangible floppy disk on which we save our data, and this data is then uploaded into the spiritual quantum field. Continuing with this analogy, when we die, the body or the physical disk is gone, but our consciousness or the data on the computer lives on. What we consider the here and now, this world, it is actually just the material level that is comprehensible. The beyond is an infinite reality that is much bigger, which this world is rooted in. In this way, our lives in this plane of existence are encompassed, surrounded by the afterworld already. The body dies, but the spiritual quantum field continues. In this way, I am immortal, says Durr. Dr. Christian Helwig of the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in uh, Goten Gotingen um, found evidence that information in our central nervous system is phase encoded, a type of coding that allows multiple pieces of data to occupy the same time. He said, our thoughts, our will, our consciousness, and our feelings show properties that could be referred to as spiritual properties. No direct interaction with the known fundamental forces of nature, natural science, such as gravitation, electromagnetic forces, etc., can be detected in the spiritual. On the other hand, however, these spiritual properties correspond exactly to the characteristics that distinguish the extremely puzzling and wondrous phenomena in the, qu in the quantum world. Physicist Professor Robert Yan of Princeton University concluded that if consciousness can exchange information in both directions with the physical environment, then it can be attributed with the same molecular binding potential as physical objects, meaning that it must also follow the tenets of quantum mechanics. Quantum physicist David Bohm, a student and friend of Albert Einstein, was of a similar opinion. He stated, the results of modern natural sciences only make sense if we assume an inner, uniform, transcendent reality that is based on all external data and facts. The very depth of human consciousness is one of them. Although there is no definite, concrete evidence for this theory, one could arguably afford some weight to these claims if some of the most brilliant minds in quantum mechanics believe that it is consistent with the general patterns and trends of modern science. If proven, this theory could have monumental implications. If humans do download their consciousness into a thus far unobservable field, then a person's consciousness could, in Durer's words, be truly immortal. So that is the article, and as always, I'm interested to know what you think. Now, I, I think that it's interesting that he says here, in this way, I'm Im immortal. Um, now, of course, us Christians know the only way for eternal life is through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Now, it, it, there, I guess... Whether somebody ends up in, in heaven or hell, uh, in, in a way, there is a type of immortality. It's not 
you know, it's it's the second death, but it's you know, hell, but it's it's you know burning forever and ever, which isn't like a really fun thing to think about, but uh, that that's that's what it is. Um, but eternal life, and, and you know, and I I think that this is actually speaking of a state that's outside of time. Um, but, uh, so in that way, you know, immortal and eternal, I think eternal really just means a state outside of time. It doesn't mean time indefinitely. Um, that's, that's infinity. Uh, eternal is a state outside of time. But anyway, um, it, it is interesting that certain physicists are a little bit more open, but we have to be careful because there are physicists that will take this and, uh, start preaching new age theology. And, and I, I, I fear that this is hinting towards that. That's a little bit what this is, because obviously there's no mention of Jesus or the Bible or, you know, anything like that. Um, it's just the the way that this is, it's like it's already just a given that when you die, you're in a quantum field and uh, that's for everybody. And it doesn't really matter what you do. You know, it's it's really it's more kind of like a new agey kind of thing. What's interesting is. Uh, physicist Sean Carroll, who uh, I, I've read a couple of his books, I, I like him a lot. You know, he's a brilliant guy. But he uh, he says that quantum field theory actually proves there is no afterlife because there's no quantum field to take any information anywhere. There's nowhere for the information to go. Um, of course, I disagree with that, but it's a good example of observation versus interpretation. And this, this article is an example of interpretation as well. It's an interpretation of quantum field theory. They look at quantum field theory. One person can say, yes, this proves the afterlife. The other person can say, no, it proves there's no afterlife. And th those are both just interpretations. They're opinions. Uh, you know, the, 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 the science... The quantum field theory intrinsically doesn't do either of those things. It just is what it is. Um, but, you know, some people take it different ways. So, uh, but I, I do think that that, I, I do think that's interesting. Um, but again, we got to be careful because some of these do get into new age beliefs. And that's something that I, I wrote about this in, in detail in my books, uh, Quantum Creation, Cherubim Chariots, and my new book, which is not out yet, but uh, hopefully will be soon. Um, and uh, especially concerning consciousness, because physicists still aren't fully sure what consciousness is. And some ha have even suggested that consciousness might be an interaction with a quantum field. This hypothetical field is called the cortical field, and the particles of that field are called corticons. Uh, consciousness might be uh, might be an interaction with that, just how an interaction with the Higgs field is what gives you mass. Interaction with a cortical field might be what gives you consciousness. Um, I don't know if God created it that way or not. I, I have no idea, uh, but I, I do think it's interesting. And I do think also that it's interesting that they hit upon the wave-particle duality thing here. What that really is, wave-particle duality, uh, what I what I believe and, and other physicists believe, and of course, just like anything else, there's different ways to look at this. But um, when I, I think, I believe, and this is something that Sean Carroll talks about too, so I mean, a, a lot of, and by his words, it seems like pretty much every physicist believes this, but that everything is made up of waves, but when we look at it, because we have limited perception, uh, we see particles. Um, now, that's not that when we look at an experiment, it changes it. That's something different. There's di there's, there's other reasons for why that happens. Um for example, if we're going to look at something, we need light to see it. Uh, something on that small of a scale, you know, photons are the the uh, particle of light. So when we're on that, when we're on a quantum scale, if we're adding photons, we're destroying the experiment. So that already that that's part of what they mean when they say when you observe something, you change it. Uh, another part of that is that. If everything's waves and you look at it, it's not that the wave instantly becomes a particle. It's because our perception is limited, so we see particles when the real reality is waves. Um, so that's that's quantum field theory. That's that whole end of it. Um, now, I'm interested, as always, to know what you think. Um, there's obviously a lot that could be looked at through this whole thing. I have a ton of videos 
and blog posts and video, you know, a ton of stuff like that. That's all free that you can find. You subscribe to my channel. You find a ton of, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, there's a lot there. I have a lot more there too, but, uh, th this for sure. And, um, uh, if you, if you, care to you can you can buy my books at ministry.com there's links in the description below also check out mark uh combs book and the beginning um i i have the link down there too for that it's a, it's a really good book I, I did a show with him on the sharpening report uh you can find that interview uh he's a very easy guy to talk to um all around great writer great guy uh so check out his book too but um so yeah subscribe Tell us what you think. Leave a comment. Rate, share, share this with your friends and family. Uh, let's get a discussion going. Um, so thank you for watching, and as always, take care and God bless.